Hey, beautiful friends. I am back with another Friday Faith Foundations episode on the Robin Graham Show. And today we're going to talk about doubt. What part does doubt play in your business? If you aren't growing, it is likely influencing your outcomes. And it's time to overcome it. I was recently doing a Bible study with Priscilla Shire, and she focused this one lesson on Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter five, specifically this. I don't know if you know her Priscilla Shire, but she is just amazing. I love her and I highly recommend her Bible studies. So I have a link in the show notes to Luke 5, if Luke chapter 5, if you don't have your Bible handy, um, you can click on the show notes and um, read that for yourself. But we, the, the emphasis was on the story that Jesus, or that is told in Luke about Jesus coming to the shore and seeing Simon there, and he was cleaning the fishing nets. They'd been out fishing all night long. And he was cleaning the heavy nets. And Jesus had all of these people following him. They estimate probably like hundreds of people following him to hear him teach. And he went and sat in Peter or Simon. This was before he was called Peter, but Simon's empty boat. And he taught from the boat. And of course, Simon's listening to him, but he's also cleaning his nets. And I'm sure he was feeling pretty exhausted having been up all night fishing and not having any success. The nets were empty. So after Jesus taught the people, he said to Simon, take your boat out to the deep and fish, toss in your nets. And I loved Peter's response to this. And of course, I've heard this story before, but there are so many times in life when I think God places a specific scripture in front of you because it's exactly when you needed it. And this is what I really needed to hear on this particular day. So, you know, Jesus tells him, (laughs) take your boat out drop your nets in the deep end. Well, you have to have a little backstory because they weren't fishing typically in the deep end. The way they were fishing was they would drop these big nets down and they would the weights on them would make them kind of fan out like a bell. And then that's how they caught the fish. They scooped up so they in, from the bottom. So they didn't go out to the deep. They were more shallow water fishing. But Jesus said, go out in the deep. So you have to think, well, Simon was probably like, What is he talking about? Why would we go out in the deep? And we spent all night long fishing and caught nothing. So why are you telling us to go back out and fish? How many times do we question what Jesus says, right? Same kind of thing. I don't know if you're as guilty of it as I am, but I'm guilty of it. So anyway, I loved Peter's response and it's something to learn from. He said, master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Simon had to trust God. And he had to overcome significant doubt to trust God to do this work all over again. Well, he did it. And when he did it, what happened? His boat was full of fish. So many fish that the boat began to sink. And he had to call in help from his partners, the sons of Zebedee, who were on the shoreline watching this happen. After they pulled in the fish, Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Be fishers of men. So they pulled their boats on shore. They left everything and they followed him. No doubt, only obedience. I guess, you know, they saw the miracle. So you might think, oh, it was easy for them because they saw 
this miracle just happened. So yeah, sure. Oh my gosh. If this guy can make our life this great, then yeah, let's go. We'll follow him. We may not see miracles in our everyday life, but we have scripture to remind us of those miracles and those miracles that happened 2000 years ago and beyond still happen today, especially when we let the doubt go and we trust and believe and we stay close to scripture and let it guide us when we listen and when we obey. I mean, I can't imagine fishing all night long and catching nothing and then being told to go out and do it again. But I can say that if your business is anything like mine has been in the past year, I haven't caught very many fish at times. Uh, sometimes it felt like I was in a complete drought, in fact. But Simon followed Jesus. He followed his instructions to a T. And he caught so many fish that he needed help bringing them in. So if you are feeling frustrated, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling doubt, put up your shield of faith, the armor of God, to knock away all those fiery darts of Satan, those doubts that he's throwing at you to distract you, to increase your doubt. Put up that armor and let them bounce off of it. Because God's got a plan for you and his plan for you is so much greater than anything we can plan for ourselves. God has given you gifts, skills, knowledge, all of the things that he's given you. He's given them to you for a reason because he has a plan for you. And that plan for you is inclusive of an abundant life, an abundant life in him. In Jeremiah 29, 11, we read, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. In Luke 5.11, we're told that Simon and his fishing partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, left everything and followed Jesus. Miracles like the miracle of fish. So many, their nets could not hold them and their boats began to sink, are available to you too. But first, you have to have faith in the truth, in Jesus Christ, the truth of his word. Faith that he will direct you and guide you and that he knows where he wants you to go and he's been there before you and he will lead you every step of the way. If you feel frustrated because clients have been scarce in the past year, like so many other businesses, in especially in the entrepreneurial space, listen to where God wants you to go and what he is telling you to do. Because if you listen, things will turn around. To hear him, you have to surrender the doubt. You have to believe and trust. Just lay that doubt at his feet. Doubt is a burden that you don't have to carry because Jesus already has walked the path before you. He sees everything. He sees what we don't see. And with him, anything is possible. And like the story of Simon in the gospel of Luke, miracles can happen at any time, no matter how impossible life seems or business seems. When you believe and overcome doubt, you'll begin to expect miracles instead of doubting them. As you listen, if you feel called to something that feels hard, maybe giving something up to follow Jesus, like a habit or a hobby or anything, Know that if he calls you to surrender something to follow him, he will equip you with the strength to do so. If he gives you an idea, he will support you in it and through it. So be open to it if he calls you to pivot your business or if he has something, if he calls you to something that may feel difficult to do. Just know he has a plan, trust that he has a plan, and that plan is to prosper you, not to harm you. I know it may seem scary, but trust me on this one because I've learned to trust him. And I want to share 
an experience I recently had as, I guess, social proof per se of what I'm talking about. I was recently in this heavy state of frustration, doubt. I wasn't sure if I was on the right path. I was questioning if I should continue my business. I had been doing so much work and focused so heavily for so long. And I don't know, it just, it wasn't feeling right. And the right clients weren't really coming in. And I was in a quarterly meeting with my bookkeeper and we, I personally was feeling kind of like a fraud, like a failure. I hadn't met my goals. Okay, yeah, so my goals were big. They were huge, but I hadn't met them. And that's the point in this. Because I hadn't met them, because things weren't going the exact way I thought they should go, I began to doubt. And I want to emphasize here that as I was going through this, every time I went to scripture, the verses that I was given that the Holy Spirit led me to were verses to stay the course, persevere, don't give up. So (laughs) I was really having this inner conflict, so to speak. And during that call with my my bookkeeper, our quarterly call where we review the books, um, we, I have joked, I needed a, a detox. Well, Shortly after our call, I went on LinkedIn and the very first post that came up in my feed was a post by Andrea and it was talking about, it It had a list actually of all the things that if you're experiencing these things, it could mean that you need a detox in your business. Things that were signs of stress, of overwhelm, overthinking, doubt, all those kind of things. Um, and as an aside, one of those items were that she listed was um, like an addiction to sugar. Hmm, I thought, (laughs) could it be that I'm addicted to sugar? Uh, Absolutely. Um, Because when I'm stressed, I crave chocolate. That's what I want. Is anybody else out there like me? Um, But I had certainly been craving sugar more than usual. So when she, when I read this post, I was like, oh my gosh, she's talking directly to me. So I contacted her and I said, hey, that post really resonated with me. And I'm curious, what do your packages look like? How do you work with your clients? So she sent me a PDF and I reviewed it. And so many things were resonating with me. And I prayed about it. And after like the course of the weekend, I had made that decision that, you know what? This is what I need. I need someone to keep me grounded in my faith. And to help me see what I'm not able to see alone. What am I missing? How are my doubts causing so much conflict in my business? Well, we uncovered a few things those first couple of times we met. And, you know, I was definitely holding on to a lot of doubt. Part of this was from an experience I'd had last year. Um, And I wasn't surrendering my business to God. Sure, I was saying that. I was letting him take the wheel, but I wasn't. I was still holding on to so much control. I wasn't trusting him the way I needed to be trusting him, the way he wanted me to. And I had succumbed to the pressures of what I'd seen other people, other coaches doing, thinking, saying. And I felt like I had to make X amount of dollars in order to be successful which isn't true. We get to set the standards for our success. It doesn't matter what anybody else makes. What we make is first of all, what God wants us to make. But second of all, those are going to be ebbs and flows from time to time. But the key is that we each have a lifestyle or a family or things we need to maintain a specific income level for. And that is different for everyone. So if you don't have it on your heart to make seven figures, don't feel like you have to shoot for that. You shoot for what is right for you and your needs and your family's needs. The other thing that I had stopped doing, stopped thinking about was my identity in Christ. And I'll link in the show notes an episode I did a few weeks ago about that because 
when I started looking at that, I realized, wow, I'm not living my life the way that my identity in Christ should be reflected, if that makes sense. And so I needed to do that work and I needed to understand that, first of all, my value is not tied to how much money I make. My identity is not solely dependent on my business. There's so much more to me that Christ says I am that I had lost that focus and I had to reestablish my my thoughts, my boundaries around my own identity. As soon as I began to focus on my identity in Christ and lay my doubts at his feet and believe that I didn't have to limit myself to one focus, things began to shift in my business. Discovery calls were booked, podcast guest interviews started appearing out of nowhere to be on other people's shows. And other great things happened too that I'd been waiting to happen for a long time. Sometimes there is a delay in catching fish because God is preparing us for something so much greater, something that he has planned for us. And sometimes we take control and we make decisions and we do things. And then all of a sudden they're not working. And the reason they're not working is because God knows that is not the healthiest things for us. That's not the best thing for us that we could end up being burnt out. So we need to be patient, of course, but even more importantly, we need to trust him and surrender our doubt and our desires. Just lay them at his feet. His timing is perfect and limitless and his plans are greater than our plans. I see that more now than I've ever seen it. I've always known it, but did I believe it deep in my heart? I think I lacked a little belief. And I think that's why Satan so easily could distract me with the doubt that I was feeling. And I can say that taking that step to hire someone to help me has made a world of difference too. This is a different type of experience. This is spiritual growth. This is spiritual coaching. Like, biblical based scripture based help that i needed to get closer to god and to to really see myself the way he sees me so that i can see the opportunities he has for me even in my business you too can overcome doubt and begin seeing a shift in your mindset and business it's possible so if you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling like maybe the time is up, is now and you should just give up, mm-mm, don't go there. Go to scripture. Sometimes planting yourself in the right environment can make all the difference. And it did for me. Whether you are already in a coaching program or are only now thinking about a coach, I want to encourage you to consider the Success Without Social Business Growth Academy It's a a group environment where where we meet bi-weekly and you're maybe a perfect fit for it. If you are struggling to grow your business, we're going to focus on business growth, obviously, and strategies, but you get to bring your questions. You get to bring your problems. And then we work together for a solution. And it's going to be such a great space or it is such a great space for anyone who's feeling doubt and vulnerability because we're going to bring faith into the equation but we're also going to hold each other up and support each other so if you're interested in that if that sounds like a great way for you to get some clarity in your business to squash some of those doubts hopefully all of them and gain a new perspective I encourage you to check it out. I will put the link in the show notes. Friend, I appreciate you being here today. I hope you enjoyed my story of how I have gone through a recent transition. And I hope that you can see how such great things happen when we toss the doubt away, when we throw in the nets, go all in in our faith and start to walk with Jesus. Have a great weekend, and I will see you all here next week. Bye.